All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ, all of you, I apologize uh, being late uh, because we have a very strong storm and we lost electricity twice. So I hope I will not lose it again. But in case we lost it, I will go live again, I hope so. Uh, uh, we have a Muslim, uh, Muhammadan, who made some comment and we are going to answer those comments. And I encourage always the Muslims uh, to do better work and to try their best to answer me or to refute me, whatever you want to call it. We have a guy here, a Muslim Abdul, he called himself Tom Christ, and I don't know what he don't call himself Tom Muhammad. Uh, look what he said. Uh, hello, Christian Prince. A while ago, challenged Muslims to bring prophecy of Prophet Muhammad prophesied yesterday. I'm giving him a couple of prophecy, and he twisted the facts about them. I will gain I will again mention them here because he did not refute those prophecies. He says, uh, uh, in English, and which and he did not translate, I don't know why. Simply, this is a, this is a verse from the Quran, chapter uh, of a room about the Romans supposedly will be defeated. And I will read for you exactly what he wrote. I'm trying to zoom in so you can read with me in your small phone or small screen. He says, regarding this ayat, the Surah Arum, which talks about the battle happened between the Persian and the Roman at the time of Muhammad. Christian Prince claimed that the word Edna mean the nearest, that mean Jerusalem, mean, who is, the, who is the one who claimed Christian Prince? which is absolutely false because Edna means the lowest point of the earth okay according to who the word Edna mean the lowest point of the earth <laughs> you see when a Muslim he says something always always uh, get him busted by his own words if we go right now to your own Islamic interpretation translation what they will say all the Muslims translated as nearest or nearer so why they are stupid and you are the only smart? This is a translation. I will change translation, by the way. Maybe this is Bigtal. Uh, let us say Bigtal is a donkey. He does not know what he's talking about. We will go to Maududi. This is a modern one. He is a, he, the Muslims like him, a lot, like him a lot because he is a, a moderate uh, translation. So he tried to defend the Quran and fabricate. We will use it just to see what Maududi will say. Okay, neighborhood, neighboring land. This is the Modudi. This is Mr. Dudi himself. Okay, forget about Dudi. We will go to Mr. Which one you want? I mean, just tell me who is a Muslim here in the in the text. Just give me a name you want. I mean, who? Let, let me see the chat. Hold on. Hey, Muslims, what what translation you like me like me to show you? What translation you like? If there's any Muslim here, what translation you like me to show you? Albury, Ahmad Raza Khan, Ahmad Ali, Shish Kebab, Hummus, I mean, oh, whatever, whatever you want, customers come first. Anybody want? What is, no, no, translation, translation, not interpretation. We are saying translation of the Quran yet. Muslims, what translation you like? Any Muslim in the bushes? So as you see, this is your Muslim translation, translating it, translating it as the most close uh, uh, land by. It's not me. I mean, why why Muslims they lie in their even a little word in the Quran in order to cover up the stupidity of the Quran? They fabricate the meaning, and all your Islamic translator even they translate the word nearby. Like if this is a book translated by Christian Prince, the Muslim will say, "Okay, you see, Christian Prince is changing the word." What about we go to dictionary? I mean, don't be stupid, Abdul. I mean, I feel really sorry for 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 the Muslims who they are desperately trying to fi to to find a prophet uh, Muhammad. They cannot find the prophet Muhammad. So what we can do? We have to fabricate lies, and we have to make him a prophet. It doesn't matter how. I will make my prophet a prophet. You like it? You don't like it? I don't care. He is a prophet, okay? All right?
Let us go here. Secondly, he said that the 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 battle they are talking about it is near the Dead Sea. Okay, what what the Roman lost near the Dead Sea? I mean, what is a big deal if they lost near the Dead Sea? They lost. They were losing everywhere. The the, the Persian at that time they were victorious. They are taking land by, by one by one. So what a big deal to mention such a thing in the Quran that the Roman they've been defeated. Can you show me what is the, you know, if we go right now and we look at the list of uh, of what you are uh, talking about, you know, what is the city which is near the Dead Sea? And all of everybody knows that the, the, the Roman, the, the biggest loss they have is Jerusalem. And that was 614. Now, if Muhammad is a prophet, any prophecy he said about the Roman must be true. Any prophecy he said about the Roman must be true. So let us see if Muhammad really is a prophet as you tr trying to claim. Let us go and review some of the prophecies about your prophet about the Roman. If Muhammad lie in one of them, he is a liar. <clears throat> as simple as that. And look here, we discover a mistake in the Quran. The verse in Arabic, it says, in the Quran it says, Alif Lam, Ghulibat al Rum, which means the Rum been defeated. Guess what? In the hadith, it says, غلبت your room, which means the room, we're victorious. In case you do not know, the Quran written without dots, without what we call tashkil. If you notice those things in the top of the words, let, let us zoom in. It, you know, I'm zooming in so, so you can see. Uh, let me line it up for you. Those things all is additional to, to the Quran. The Quran was not like this. There's no such a thing. So those things you see in the top, here, those little, those dots, like this dot here, and this sign, and this sign, and this sign, and, and those two dots here, and this sign, and this uh, sign, Shadda, and Dhamma, and Dhamma, and all, all of those are not in the Quran. So it was a plain book with no... Uh, 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 addition there's there's no dots there's nothing so it's very hard to understand really what it says and look now they have it with the dots and this is a hadith and the hadith saying the opposite the quran did not say the room were defeated the quran saying the, the roman they've been you know the, the roman they've been victorious and look at the first translation the muslims they come with in english it says the Roman have been defeated, but in Arabic here in the front of me, it says, غلبت your room. And again, the translation repeated for the same sentence here, غلبت your room, not غلبت your room. And here it says, the Roman, they became victorious. This is what it says. So let us go and read some hadith and love to gather at the false prophet who he claimed to be a prophet. Uh, Muhammad, he made many prophecy about the Roman. And I'm very thankful that Muhammad, he spoke too much about the Roman because the more he prophesied, the more he get himself busted. Let us see one by one. Muhammad, he claimed that the judgment day will not come until the Roman are the majority of mankind. Do you see it, Abdul? Number, number one population in the world should be the Roman, according to your prophet. So the judgment day will not come until the Roman became the major population in the world. Do you see it? You're a prophet got busted again. So Muhammad, he think, there's no way this Roman Empire will disappear. I mean, come on. So it's going to grow and grow and grow, and they will become the major population of this earth. Now, is that true? <laughs> you see, remember, 
if a person he made he made a prophecy and the prophecy turned to be a lie this is what the Bible says by the way there's two conditions to know a prophet he is a false prophet number one he prophesy in the name of the wrong God which means not our God number two if he make a prophecy and the prophecy did not come to be true now where is the state where is the country it's called the country of the Roman which is the major population of the earth is that a China is that India is that Indonesia huh what is the major population obviously Muhammad when he made this uh, 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 prophecy uh, he was taking too much hashish but I understand he's a false prophet in his time the Roman they were occupying a huge part of, of the of earth so why he will not think this way it's very normal for a liar like Muhammad to think in such a way and to predict something already happening supposedly at that time because at that time they were the major population and they say they are they are controlling the major population of the world but they are not really a major population so Muhammad by predicting such a thing he just again proved to us that he is a false prophet we don't even have a country is called the Roman Empire no more what is the Roman obviously Muhammad is a false prophet let us continue Muhammad he prophesied about attacking Constantinia all right now let us see what Muhammad he said and let us laugh together we were engaged in the battle of etc and okay okay and then here let's go down to see where Muhammad is speak actually this one is very long uh, hey, hold on let us let us take something else something easier something easier okay this one this one is better and this is Sahih too, all right? all right? The last hour would not come until the Roman would land in Al Amak. Hmm. Where is that? Or in Dabiq. So this is a sign of judgment day. If the Roman they they, they land in Dabiq, the, the judgment day will come. But the Roman they married they, they land in Dabiq many times. Now he continued saying, and when they do that. An army will come from where? From Al Medina. <laughs> what Medina? Is Medina is a country by itself? So an army will come from where? From Al Medina. And between them, the best of mankind. But there is no Roman Empire no more to come from Al Medina. This is a sign of a judgment day. I mean, do you see how stupid this prophecy is? We don't have them no more. What Roman Empire? So Muhammad he claimed that the Roman will attack and this is a sign of a judgment day and the best of, of the best of the Muslims will come from the Medina and they will go to fight them and look what will happen and then uh, the Roman would say do not stand between us and those Muslims who took prisoners from among us let us fight with them and the Muslims would say nay by Allah we would never get aside from you and from our brothers that you may fight them so now the the, the roman they will they will attack a brother uh, the brothers of the muslims who are they let it go now they then will fight and the third part of the army would run away whom allah will never forgive so third part of the army of the muslims will run away as usual the same as we do with with, uh, with, with israel and then which will be constitute an excellent murder of allah i and would be killed the third would not so the third of the army will be killed the third will be uh, killed and the third will run okay so that's mean the third will survive right okay and then uh, and then they will they would conquer Constantinia all right and then they will be busy distributing the spoil but this is the army will come from Medina Constantinia is already they even they changed the name they call it Istanbul The Abdul in his post, he said, "This is a this is about judgment day, which means the Muslims will occupy it again. You want to occupy it from the Muslims again, and there is no Roman. <laughs> what Roman? <laughs> and not only that, 
Muhammad he claimed that when you occupy Constantinia, the Dajjal, the false messiah, will come right away. All right? Read carefully. And after hanging their sword by olive trees, the Satan would cry that the Dajjal has taken your place among your family, and they would then come out, but there would not would be no avail. Uh, uh, and then he will, would come to Syria. He would come out while they are preparing themselves to the battle, uh, uh, drawing uh, up the ranks. So the fight between the Roman, which was going to take between the, the between the Roman and between the Muslims, is in Arabia or in the border of Arabia, not in Constantinia. But anyway, so here, after the attack, and supposedly they want to take Constantinia, suddenly the false Messiah will come, and then when the false Messiah come, the Messiah he will land in Jerusalem in the elevator is called the elevator of Damascus. Yeah, the Messiah here cannot land without elevator. All right, read carefully. The Dajjal has taken your place among your family and would come out and would be a veil, and they would come to Syria and he would come uh, out while they would be still preparing themselves to the battle, uh, uh, drawing up the rank. Certainly, the time of a prayer shall come, and then Jesus, peace upon him, son of Mary, will descend to them, land on them. That when the enemy of Allah see him, he would disappear and he would dispose like salt. Glory to Jesus. Even Shaitan, when he sees Jesus, he dispose like, like, like salt. But when Shaitan sees Muhammad, he jump in his shoulder, as the hadith says. So as you see, all of this is a fiction and stupid stories. There's no Roman no more, and they are not in Syria, and they are not in Constantinia, and they are not in Arabia, and this is a stupid story. Something else. Let us keep moving. Another hadith. We have more hadith to show. Hmm. According to Muhammad, the Jews, they will attack uh, the Roman. Who? The Jews will attack the Roman. How is that will happen? The Jews will attack the uh, will attack the Roman. Hmm? I'm, I'm trying to find the hadith. Um, let us see if we can find it. <laughs> the Jews will attack the Roman. <laughs> I really like you, Muhammad. Uh, let us see. Oh, hold on before we jump oh, okay when when the when the the muslims when the roman they were victorious again they were victorious according to the hadith here uh, after the battle of badr but the battle of badr was uh, 624 so this is past the 10 years muhammad he spoke about or nine years sorry 625 after 624 Read carefully with me. Abu Sa'ad narrated that the day of Badr, the Roman had victory over the Persian. So the believer pleased by that. Okay. So now we got a date from the Muslim saying that the Roman, they were victorious again by the fight of Badr, according to the Muslim, not according to me. Remember, on the day of Badr, the Roman had a victory over the, over the Persian. So the believers were pleased. And by the way, why the believers were pleased? Here there is some kind of mystery in the story. Because if the Romans are kuffar and they are the enemy of Allah, and even Muhammad, he wanted to kill them all. So why the Roman, if they are victorious, Muhammad and the Muslims are pleased? Any Muslim can answer that? Why will be pleased? Why the believers will be happy? With the victory of the Roman over the Persian, are you Roman? Is the God of the Roman is your God? He, their God is Jesus. So why the Muslims are you know happy here? Simply Muhammad he, at, the, at that moment Muhammad was trying to play Christian. Muhammad was a person. He's a refugee, whatever the word mean. When he is with the Jew, he is a Jew like Obama. 
Obama he go to Egypt he make a speech he quote the Quran he's a Muslim he go to uh, Jerusalem he wear the hat of the Jews and he kiss the wall of the temple he is he's a Jew and even he put the paper in the wall he go and sit with the atheist he's an atheist he go to the church he's a Christian that is Muhammad otherwise you explain to me why Muhammad will be and the people of Muhammad will be pleased by the Roman victory when just a few years after Muhammad he attacked him himself uh, first attack he could not make it uh, then after he died actually the Muslims were able to penetrate through the Roman land now uh, five things have passed i.e. the smoke the defeat of the Roman the splitting of the moon all right the splitting the moon and read carefully with me uh, the defeat of the infidels and those are signs of the judgment day but let's, let us go more uh, the Roman will enter Syria and stay for 40 days and no place will be saved from them but Damascus and Oman <laughs> <laughs> no comment. All right. Um, read carefully with me here. You will fight the Arabian Peninsula and victory will be granted by Allah. Then you will fight the Roman and victory will be granted by Allah. And you will fight the Dajjal and the victory will be granted by Allah. And then uh, Jabir said, the Dajjal will not appear until you fight the Roman, which means this is the last thing to happen. But there's no Roman no more. Let us continue. I want to find the hadith where Muhammad he says that you will fight uh, 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 the Jews will attack will attack uh, uh, will attack the Roman. Uh, hold on, let us see. Let us see. <coughs> There's a hadith, I'm, I just remember it, where Muhammad he claimed that uh, uh, 70,000 of the Jews they will attack the Roman. What is, I mean, how in the world Muhammad he says such a thing? Uh, too much hashish. Let us see. And as you see, Muhammad he is stuck with the number 70,000. Everything is 70,000. 70 versions, 70, 70, you know. 70,000 angels, 70,000 uh, people will enter the heaven without his, uh, without uh, uh, like a judgment. Uh, as you see. Let us see. I'm trying to find it. Here we go. We found it. Abu Huraira reported this is Sahih Muslim, so the Muslim cannot say this is a lie. All right, this is Sahih. This is Sahih Muslim, as you see, and let us go down to the reference. Sahih Muslim 29208. Now remember. Numbers of the Muslims uh, translation have nothing to do with real numbers. Just to take that into consideration. You have heard about the city, one side which in on the land and the other one in the sea. Obviously, Constantinia. They said, Allah Messenger, yes. He said, thereupon, the last hour would not come unless 70,000 person from Beni Ishaq, the Jews, the son of Isaac, they will attack it. <laughs> I mean, this is a this is a nice one, huh? What?
بني اسحاق ان هو بني اسحاق and by the way those بني اسحاق they will say Allah is a great uh, read with me carefully when they would land there they will neither fight with weapon nor uh, shower arrows but would only say Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar and that's it this is how they win the war <laughs> All right, and I think he said the part of the side of the ocean and they would say the second time there is no God but Allah no God but Allah and uh, Okay And the gates would be open to them and they would enter the gates In the judgment day there's gates to enter into uh, Castanchenia Hmm? If there is any Abdul in the bushes So we are talking about judgment day maybe thousand of years from now the gates will open what is that? So when a Muslim he tried to make as a prophet a prophet we die laughing This is a joke Especially when you're a prophet, he says that the judgment day will not come until the Roman or the majority of mankind. That alone is the biggest lie ever. All right? There's a sheikh you want to call me. He can take. Uh, he can text in, in Skype. He can text any one of you. Sorry, in uh, in uh, in Facebook. And confirm to me that he is a sheikh, and then I will I will uh, I will call him. Most of them they are kids. <clears throat> so do you see how how we got Muhammad busted? Muhammad is he is a prophet. He should not lie once. But Muhammad always he lie. When you say that judgment day will not come and but the Roman will be the majority of mankind, that's a big fat lie. And obviously this is not true. Post for us uh, your Skype, uh, the one who claimed to be a sheikh. Uh, sorry, post for us your Facebook. Post in your Facebook first that I changed to Christian Prince now immediately. And post your Skype there. And post the link for us. And I will click in it. I will go there to your Skype. or So to your uh, Facebook, sorry. Or the admins will check that. And if you are ready, who you claim, we will call you immediately. So let us make it clear. A liar is a liar. If you lie once out of ten, you are a liar. If you lie twice out of ten, you are a liar. If you lie ten after out of ten, you are a liar. And Muhammad he lied twenty after out of twenty out ten. Nay for me, one thing Muhammad he said of all those things is not a lie. Everything we see in the front of us is a pure lie. And here, by the way, as long as we are reading this chapter here, <clears throat> uh, you will see the Muslim how they fabricate translation in order to, co to, to cover up the, st the stupidity of the author of the Quran. Here it says, so glorify Allah. It doesn't say that. He said it says a, glor a glory to Allah. You see how they change translation? There's a huge difference between so glorify Allah, which means as an order for you to glorify, or if it's saying for subhanallah, pr praise be to Allah. Allah is saying praise be to Allah. How stupid that is. But always the author of the Quran, he forget to switch between him and Allah. And that make it funny. This is why you know I'm working in the in the translation, uh, in the Quran translation, so everybody will see uh, the real translation for the Quran. Now, any any other Muslim here, he have a prophecy made by Muhammad, so we can get it busted. 
Anyone? Anyone? Let me show you a prophecy of Muhammad in the Quran. You know, the funny, the Muslim is they say, uh, uh, like, there's a messenger and there's a prophet, which is very funny. So there's a messenger and there's a prophet. I mean, how in the world you can be a messenger but not a prophet? Because a messenger of God, he is giving a message nobody knows, save God and him. So this is a prophecy, you idiot. When you say to when you say to people, if you don't believe in God, judgment day will come. That's prophecy. So how you can be a messenger of God, but yet you are not a prophet? Because the real prophet, by the way, is God Himself. Because the prophecy is coming from God. The prophet in earth is just a man who present, or let us say, who deliver the prophecy to the people. So we call him a prophet, but the real reality is anyone who deliver a message from God, he is prophesying to the other people. Now, if we go and read the Quran and try to find something smart about Muhammad in this book, Muhammad prophesying in the Quran, like what? Muhammad is the only one knows that Hail is coming down from mountains in heaven. How Muhammad he knew that unless he is a genius prophet? Any Muslim can explain to me? Allah he sent down hail from the sky out of out of mountains that are in it. Muhammad he was sitting alone thinking how hail is made how hail is made she's kebab falafel hummus and then he come to the idea there is mountains in the sky and Allah he break hails from there and he throw it at us do you see it Muslims Muhammad and do you see it do you support this prophecy? Who is a Muslim here? He support this prophecy. I, I think I'm going to convert to Islam because uh, I think now we are going to have hail. You see, the, the, the thunder is very strong outside and the rain. I don't know if you can hear it. Can you hear anything, guys? Anyone can hear anything? Do you hear any rain or anything? I don't know. Maybe the mic will not capture it. But look at this. Muhammad is for sure a prophet of Allah but there's no doubt otherwise how we knew that you tell me how he knew that how he knew that there's hail is coming from the sky from mountain which is in the sky how he knew that it took the scientist thousands of years to discover how it come how it happened Muhammad in two seconds he made it clear for you. What else? I mean, we can go over the Quran and we can we die laughing. What about the verse after it? Muhammad is a, what they call guys. If somebody he is a scientist for uh, about animals, what they call him? Animal scientist. What they call him? What the title will will be given for somebody he is an animal scientist? You know, my English is limited. Only my Chinese is good. Vet? What vet? I, I thought vet is the guy who just uh, do circumcision for the dog. Hello? Zoologist. Thank you. Here we go. Susie. Susie, uh, uh, I will send you to heaven because you helped me. Thank you. Zoologist. Yeah, not vet. What vet? Unbelievable. Those guys are must be crazy. They are Christians. I mean, what do you expect from Christians? 
We ask them who is a scientist. They say to you vet. I mean look at those questions <laughs> I mean, No one that I want to be a Muslim look at this Muhammad he is a zoologist. I mean, it's really hard. Can we change it to different word? Zoologist. Hmm. Allah, he told Muhammad a prophecy, which nobody knows. Only Muhammad. He says, from every, from every, Allah created from every animal from water. Among them are some, and here the lie, the first lie. They say creep. It doesn't say in Arabic creep. It says walk. Walk in their belly. And some of them they walk with two feet, and some of them they're walking for. Hold on, that's it. That's it. We are done. So Allah He squeezed His head harshly, and He come with a discovery nobody knows. He noticed that there is some animals they walk in their belly, which is a wrong word in Arabic. You have to say creep, and this is why they fix it in English. And some they walk in two feet, and some they walk in four. Are you sure? You look like Muhammad, he never heard of something called a spider. All animals they have either four or two or in their belly, and that's it. Are you sure? <laughs> and by the way, uh, uh, here they, they translate the word, it says animal, it doesn't say even that, it says. Daba, Daba, Daba is anything walk on this earth. Anything have feet. This is what Daba is. It's not an animal, you know. Anything have feet. Uh, you can say it's an animal, but I mean it's a creation of anything which live or alive and have feet. Dabbayadubu, which means he hit his foot with the ground. But here the word dabba does not match because those who creep they are they cannot be considered dabba because it doesn't hit its foot in the ground. So this is the first mistake. The second mistake. Muhammad he think that there's only animals, or here in this verse, actually, he claim that either you in your belly or into foot. Or in four foot. Is that right? Muslims, is that right? No, no, insect does not have six legs only. There's some insects, insect they have uh, uh, maybe 40, 50. I don't know how many. I, I have an insect. She's my friend, actually, by the way. Once I invited her for a dinner, and she was like she came second day. I asked the insect, what made you so uh, late? She said, CP, by the time I put my shoes on and I tie it up, 24 hours is gone. True story, by the way. Sahih al Bukhari. So, those insects are what? Uh, this is the insect I invited, by the way. This is why she was late. She was wearing her shoes, putting socks. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's not easy. You know? So, Muhammad, he claimed that those are just, uh, you know, there's only either two or three or, or, or two or four. Uh, what about wings? <clears throat> the Muslims, the birds in Islam, how many, how many wings do they have? Any Muslim have an idea? <clears throat> mm. Mm. Okay. I know where is the Muslims? Where is the Muslims? I don't see them.
Any of you? Hmm. I don't know. I'm really disappointed. I thought, I thought well, I will find some kind of resistance here. But I don't know. Like the Muslims are leaving Islam left and right, and nobody have an answer. You know, I'm going to make a prophecy. I think the majority of mankind, uh, in the, before the judgment day, is going to be. Uh, <clears throat> Um, the Amish. I mean, lie. I mean, who care? Lie as much as you want. Claim to be prophet. Who is going to live from those who they are here until judgment day? I will be dead. They will be dead. <laughs> hey, by the way, I have a question about angels. Because I find the Quran is really funny. Uh, how many how many wings the the angels they have in Islam, Muslims? Abdullah Raboja, who is Abdullah Raboja? Did we told him just? Uh, did he give a, did did he give his Facebook? Did he give his Facebook? Don't waste our time. Give us your Facebook. Post in your Facebook, your Skype. We'll check you out, and we will call you. Guys, look at this and laugh. Chapter 35, verse number 1. We appointeth the angels' messengers having wings, two and a three and four. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Anyone notice what the problem? Anyone notice where is the disaster here? His Facebook is fake. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They are fake people. Okay, let me check his Facebook. Hold on. Uh, this guy, he just uh, created Facebook uh, two days ago. Well, one, day, one, one minute ago. <laughs> we said, you see, Abdul, this is, why, this is how we avoid kids. Or just a kid. Guys, anyone notice with me how stupid this statement is? Who noticed with me? An angel with three wings. How is that? Any Muslim have an idea? We have angels with three wings. Wings, wings. But this is not even the problem yet. There's a bigger problem. Anyone, anyone, think with me. What is bigger problem than there's angels? They have two wings, three wings, and four. Anyone, anyone notice what is the problem? There's bigger problem. Anyone? Any Abdul? There's a bigger problem. No, no, no. Forget about how you fly. You know, Allah will make him fly. Don't worry. Is it Muhammad? He says that the angel Jibreel have 600 wings. The Quran confirmed that there's angels who Allah, he sent them down to the earth. Only one of those are three kinds. Either they have two wings, three wings, or four wings. So how Jibreel have 600 wings? Do you see how we got Muhammad busted? He's a liar. Let us go to the hadith and love together. Guys, do you, do you hear, do you hear the, the thunder? If we lose electricity, we will lose broadcast. Let us see. <clears throat> I 
the prophet said that he saw Zibril and he had 600 wings. Do you see it? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> 600 wings, brother. Prophet Muhammad, he said he saw Zibril and he has 600 wings, brother. So why the Quran says the angels are either uh, two wings, three wings, and by the way, I have three wings. I have to be honest with you. In the other day, I went to swim in the swimming pool uh, where it's uh, mi minus uh, 30. And, uh, you know, they did not let me swim, not because it was so cold, but because they said you have uh, wrong wings. I mean, your, your wing appear in the wrong location. Why it is there? And this is Sahih. The Muslim, they cannot say it's a lie. It's, it's, it's a fabricated hadith. This is Sahih Muslim, and we can show it. You're from Sahih Bukhari. So, how the Quran says that Allah He sent angels either have two wings, three wings, four wings. Let me draw the angel who have uh, three wings. Hold on. You know, I'm very good in art, by the way. I was invited to uh, the, to the museum in Munich to teach artists how to draw because they uh, became famous. You know. Mashallah, Allah made me famous. So this is the angel. Okay, this is an angel, Islamic angel. And now he have three wings. And the third wings, I guess it is here in his ass. <laughs> Unbelievable how good I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure my mother, she will be proud of me when she see me doing that. Unbelievable. I mean, look at this. Let me put my signature so nobody will... Uh, will uh, uh, you know take it and uh, print it and uh, uh, clean copyright over it I will make my signature in Arabic so uh, you cannot steal it from me okay here we go now it's secure and uh, uh, signature here okay what is that even the word is not right Okay. Alhamdulillah. So, is it so? You Muslims, you say to us, Muhammad is a prophet, and yet he cannot even maintain his lies. I mean, at least let him cover his lies. How he saw Jibreel in three six hundred wings when the Quran says angels who sent to the earth only, either, either with two wings or uh, connected I think Sahih Christian is trying to buy my draw my my paint for three dollars let us have an auction here <laughs> uh, Muslims how your prophet he says he that he saw Jibreel with 600 wings when the Quran says with the clear words as you see it's not my words that all the angels who Allah he sent them down to the earth either have two or three or four wings who is a liar any Abdul So they are working hard trying to make Muhammad a prophet, but it's not working. هناك شيخ وأنا أعلم أنه يستجمع الجن ويسميه الملائكة المسلمين. أني عبدول. You can answer in text if you want. Anyone? One of them 
if you are a liar if one of them is a liar either either Allah if this is the book of Allah and the hadith is the book of Muhammad and the hadith of Muhammad is confirmed to be true which means there's no doubt about it it's a lie that's mean one of them is a liar either Allah or Muhammad which one anyone the hadith is fake that cannot be because it is sahih <laughs> my friend it's sahih it is sahih i mean we cannot say we can't say it's weak anymore i mean the game of weak and strong we cannot we cannot use it brother we cannot that's it this is sahih what we would do Mimi Hijab will debate Edward Tabash. Who is Edward Tabash? I don't know who is that guy. And why he don't dare to debate me? Hmm. He will debate people who do not know. Uh, anyway. Is that Sahih? This is Al-Bukhari. Look at this Al-Bukhari, brother. I asked Abu Zer about the statement of Allah, and he was the distance of by two ball long length, or even nearer. So to blah 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 and then blah 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 and then the Jibreel and then the and then he says and the prophet he saw Muhammad had seen by the Jibreel with six hundred wings. Uh, by the way, how Muhammad, how fast the prophet Muhammad he can count the wings. He's an atheist. Yeah, stupid debate. Any Abdul? Guys, don't tell me about those things. You are promoting false people. Both of them are false. No different. A Muslim is a false, an atheist is a false. So why are promoting stupid? Too stupid are going to debate about their stupidity. Any Abdul? Who want to answer? Which one of them is a liar? Even by the way, even Aisha, she said the prophet he saw Jibreel and he have six hundred wings. Anyone? Who is a Muslim want to answer? And you know, we can keep showing you tons and tons and tons of reference of Muhammad being a false prophet. I mean, there's things almost we repeat every time because it's very funny, like this one. This is my favorite, actually, of the Prophet Muhammad. That's why, since since I did read this hadith, uh, I, 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 I stopped calling him Prophet Muhammad. I start calling him Dr. Muhammad. I mean, how the prophet he knew this? If the mother, if the women have orgasm first, the baby will be a, a, a girl. If the father have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. How we knew that? There is no way this is a false prophecy. This is a true prophecy. Huh? Doctor Muhammad he is the best. No. Well, Dr. Muhammad, he knew everything. Any Muslim have a prophecy for us? Any Muslim have a prophecy? He is willing to sacrifice the, the, the prophet and the and and under the, the bulldozer. You see, the funny is each time the Muslim they try to present Muhammad as a prophet and they made articles. You know, they got they themselves they help us to destroy him. Uh, hold on, I want to go back to the to, to the comment of this guy. Look what he said too. <clears throat> the prophet of Allah said, "Which one of the cities is going to be uh, uh, open first? 
he said Constantinia or Rumia the Prophet said the city of Hercules which mean the Constantinia hold on but Muhammad he said that the sign of the judgment day is opening the Constantinia not to open it Rome <clears throat> hmm? Instead, uh, Christian Prince, uh, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Instead of Christian Prince, he showed us two hadith where Muhammad prophesied that the Constantinia will be uh, liberty by the Arab at the end of the claim. Okay, well, no, not only this, uh, I just showed you that the one who will attack. Uh, Constantinia, there will be 70,000 of many I, the sons of Isaac, <laughs> not only the Arabs. So there's a contradiction. And then he says, uh, Did not yet happen. And then he says, After the Battle of Dabek, uh, and they claim that the Arab did not conquer that the city, but the truth, and thus Muhammad is a liar. He mixed up the hadith and twisted the fact ask any Muslim scholar he will tell you that the two hadith he mentioned did not happen yet for sure did not happen yet this is why we say your prophet is a false prophet <laughs> Abdul your prophet says the Arab will occupy Constantinia so and not only that, he said that the Turk are the enemy of the of the Muslims. Read and laugh. Your prophet said, "Let the Ethiopian alone as long they left you alone, and let the Turk alone as long they left you alone. The Turk are not Muslims, and Muhammad never predicted they will be Muslims." And he claimed that judgment day will come and you will fight the Turk. So signs of the judgment day is fighting the Turkish. Do you see it, Abdul? This is Sahih Hadith. Read, uh, read, brother, read. <clears throat> read, brother. Uh, oh, messenger of Allah, pray for me, grant me victory, and blah 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 blah. So the messenger of Allah prayed and said, Then I struck the third bow in the city of Ethiopia, where shown me the villages of etc. blah 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 blah. And then I leave the city, and then he says, And leave the truck as much they left you alone. Uh, I'm trying to find the hadith about the Turkish. Hold on. Do you see it? So Muhammad he claimed that the Turkish will not be Muslims until the judgment day. Guys, do you see it? Muhammad he said, the judgment day will not come until you fight the Muslims, they fight the Turks. So what is the first group? Is the Muslims, not the Arab, the Muslims. What is the second group? Is the Turk, which means they are not Muslims. So again, Muhammad is a false prophet. The Turks are already Muslims. And actually, they are the one who took over the Constantinia. So Muhammad, he claimed in one hadith that the one who will take over the Constantinia is the Arab, and they are from the city of al Medina, and they are from Bani al hijaz too, in different hadith. In other, on the other hand, he claimed that the sign of the judgment day 
you will fight the Turk and you will defeat them when when you uh, Muslims fought the Turk and you defeated them any Muslim can tell us when was the battle between the Muslims and the Turk and you defeated them and you killed them all and why your prophet think, think that the Turk they will never enter into Islam I heard Allah messenger saying near the hour you will fight with the people who wear hairy shoes and you will also fight with the flat uh, faces like shield those are the Turkish the same as the hadith here but in this hadith he said the word clearly the Turkish do you see it the hour will not begin until the Muslims fight the Turks and a people with faces like hammered shield who wear clothes made of hair shoes made, uh, made of hair so look here at the false prophecy Muhammad is not only saying you will fight the Turk he's saying that in the judgment day the Turkish are going to be Asian which means Muhammad you do not know the Turkish will attack Constantinia and they will rape all the Roman women and their children will be blown if you go to Turkey now you don't find the Asian Turkish no more they are white people and there is nobody their faces is like a hammer shield and none of them is wearing a, hair, a, a, clo a clo clothes made of hair so Muhammad he predict that when you fight those people you will fight them as non-believers in the top of that they are wearing such a cloth in the top of that they are a pure Asian do you see it again this is a false prophecy he described even how the Turkish look like when you fight them any Abdul Any Muslim have an answer? And by the way, here he is making fun of the Asian people. Look what he said about the Asian people. He says their faces like hammer shield. Oh, I forgot too. What about Gog and Magog? <laughs> I mean, how I forgot that? How I forgot that? How I forgot the prophecy about Gog and Magog, brother? Muhammad he said today today the wall barrier of Gog and Magog has been opened so much if, 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 if anyone knows what Gog and Magog is anyone knows what Gog and Magog according to Muhammad The Muslim will use the bows and arrows and shield of Gog and Magog as firewood for seven years. <laughs> Remember, this is in the judgment day. The, the people of Gog and Magog, by the way, for those who do not know, they are not a human. They are not a human. They are a special kind of a creature. We do not know what they are. But if you have my book, you will see that Muhammad he claimed that you can sleep even inside the, the their ear is so big so when they want to sleep or they want to have sex with their wife they go sleep inside their ear have you ever heard of somebody sleep inside his ear in the judgment day there is still people will be using arrows and shield and they are made from wood this is in the judgment day look like your prophet you did not hear about the star war program of George Bush you're a prophet he did not hear that the Russian now they have weapon they can burn the earth 50 60 time what would this is judgment day my friend and look at the other pro false prophecy Muhammad he says 
there is no being worthy to worship except Allah there is a destruction in a store of for Arabia for a turmoil which as it at hand which mean Muhammad saying now now the torture is coming the people of Gog and Magog they are coming Allahu Akbar they are in the corner look read it do you see it Muhammad he predicted that they are there and he says a barrier the barrier between Gog and Magog has opened so much so he's warning the Arab be careful they are coming to you and he says Abu Sufyan made a sign then with the help of his hand in order to indicate the width of the gap and he said all the messenger would be perished in spite of the fact that where would be good people among us mm. all right <laughs> all of this is about Gog and Magog <laughs> uh. <coughs> Okay, you see, all oh, false prophecy. By the way, for those who do not know what Gog and Magog, uh, the Quran, speak about them that when Alexander the Great, or what the Muslims they call him, uh, uh, Zulkarnain, the man with the two horn, and the reason he's called the man with the two horn because simply when he invited his people to convert to Islam, his people they did beat him with the hammer point in his head, and he got the first ho horn. And then Allah he resurrected him from death and he sent him again to his people. So his people again they hit him in the other side of his head with the hammer boing, and he got the second horn. True story. Now, here is Zulkarnain when he arrived to those people. Those people who they are supposed to be so stupid, but look the Quran saying they are so smart. Just to show you the stupidity of the author, or the author of the Quran, when he reached the place between the two barriers, he found between them people who could could hardly understand the word. Now here they put if his language that's a lie, because la yakaduna yafqahuna qawlan, which means they can't even speak, and then suddenly they say. Zulkarnain, indeed, Gog and Magog are causing a disaster in this land. Shall we pay you a tribute in the condition that you build a barrier between us and them, brother? Suddenly, Zulkarnain became a contractor. I thought he is the one who conquered them. How somebody he conquered them, he is going to be hired by them. And now Zulkarnain, he said, okay. I will build for you a bridge between you and them. Muslims. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul in the bushes? Do we have any Abdul in the bushes? Let me show you how silly this story is. I, I have to draw some art, you know. I cannot resist the temptation. I have to draw something, something, something. Okay, let's draw here. <clears throat> if we draw here, <coughs> let us say, According to the story, there is two hills or two mountains. One is here and one is here. And people of Gog and Magog, they are here. And those people are here. People. So Zulkarnain, he built a dam between them and between those people. So they cannot go through. And the dam is built from copper and iron. Copper and iron. Okay. According to Muhammad, 
The people of Gog and Magog, they cannot go through until the judgment day. But why? I mean, the only way for this to happen, if the if there is a fence and the, the earth is a flat, and the fence go all the way to the end of the earth, correct? If they are behind the fence, the only way, I mean, why Gog and Magog, they don't come from this direction and come here, that's it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> do, do you understand what I'm saying? If Gog and Magog is, is from one side of the earth and we are from the other side, all of us, we are a human in the other side. Where are they? <laughs> and and Zul Qurnayn, he built a dam between us and them, a wall, so they cannot come in. I mean, isn't it this is alone enough to prove that Muhammad is a big fat liar? Isn't it enough to prove that this is or Muhammad is a scam? Where is Gog and Magog? Which there is a dam between us and them and they cannot penetrate it through. <clears throat> huh? Let me find a picture. Maybe a picture will be more helpful. Hold on. Give me a second. Okay, look like I am uh, uh, going to find the perfect picture for this uh, uh, story. Okay, this one is perfect. <clears throat> Let us show it in the screen. So now we have two mountains, one in the in the right and one in the left. Forget about the river. Let us imagine this is just a land. And in that side, in this side here, there's a people of Gog and Magog. In this side here, there is the people, the good people. The people of Gog and Magog, they say to Zulqarnain, for the sake of Allah leg, build for us a dam. So he said to them, okay, bring me copper and iron. And he melted them and he made the bricks and he built a dam between those two mountains. And now supposedly the people of Gog and Magog, they cannot go through. It's a very high wall. That's it. You cannot climb it and it's very soft. Don't try. And you cannot dig underneath. Come on, it's made from iron. Hello? So, Muhammad, when he said the hadith, he said that the people of Gog and Magog, they made a hole, like they can see through. And that is dangerous. He is saying uh, uh, that, man, the Arab are going to face a very horrible time because a little tiny hole made in that wall. Muhammad claimed that judgment day will not come. A sign of the judgment day is when those people, Gog and Magog, they make a hole in that wall. I mean, that's nice. Hole in that wall. Whew. I never thought I can say that. I mean, hole in that wall. Let us make a hole in that wall. Hold on. So this is the wall, brother, and the wall is covered up by iron, brother, and copper. So they cannot go through. That's it. But the people of Gog and Magog, they are trying every day 
uh, and there is by the way there's a story told by Prophet Muhammad uh, and he never lied Prophet Muhammad never lied you know all of us we knew that he never lied anyone remember it he says that the people of Gog and Magog every day they dig in the wall and then when they come in the second morning they find that the digging is fixed by Allah they dig Allah fix it they go to sleep they come in the morning just to, to continue working they found the hole like let us see the they they make a hole here huh? oh no, no hole they are digging here oh here here they make a hole here huh but it's not enough for them to put their head yet it's like enough small I mean but they can see it through but they cannot go through it and now they go to sleep when the morning come a lot when they come back they find that this hole is fixed brother Alhamdulillah anyone knows why each time they go to sleep and they come back they find the hole is fixed because they forgot to say inshallah thank you I am uh, uh, I move 70 I mean have you ever heard of a stupid story like this the reason the hole is fixed because when they start for eternity for thousands of years they are digging they're digging 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 but each time they make a hole Allah fix it why because they forgot to say inshallah but one day one day the leader of Gog and Magog before they start he will say before one well, actually not before we start before they go to sleep after they open this small hole he will say to his uh, soldiers let us go sleep and inshallah tomorrow we continue work and now because he said inshallah Allah will not close the hole for them and then they will be able to go through <laughs> any Muslim want to prove me uh, to be a liar who is a Muslim here saying I'm lying about this story <clears throat> Who is a Muslim? And I hope you will not lose the power. This uh, the standard is going crazy. Hmm. Let me show you the hadith. <coughs> so the Muslim will not say uh, I'm making things up Okay. <coughs> Let us see if we can find it in English. This is the issue. Always you have to find things in English because none of you or maybe few of you here we go we found the story Alhamdulillah <laughs> thank you Satan thank you Satan Allah for helping us Abu Al Hadith Abu Huraira Abu Huraira by the way for those who not know what Huraira mean Huraira mean cats like uh, uh, like when you spoil cats you call them Huraira so he is the father of cats Abu Huraira Reported from the Prophet S A W F M W Mercedes Benz regarding the barrier, chapter eighteen, verse number ninety-three. They excavated each day until they are just about to penetrate, almost, almost there. Their leaders say, "Go back, that you cannot penetrate it tomorrow." Ah, I mean, how smart this leader is! They are almost there. I mean, come on, let them finish, Abdul. Why are you being stupid? I mean, every day for eternity you are doing that, and now you are almost there. You say to them, go home. T tomorrow will come. So he will say to them, 
go back go back right, let's change the color hold on this color is not good yellow which color you like guys this one this one go back so that you cannot be traded tomorrow he said but Allah will make it return just as it was if 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 until their appointed time which Allah mean he will keep doing that they go they dig every day dig every day they go to sleep they come back in the morning they find it fixed I mean look at this horrible life those poor people of Gog and Magog they're just gonna get out and they dig every day since thousands of years ago they go back to sleep they wake up in the morning it's it's fixed and then when Allah or the night to send them upon the people their leader will say go back so you can penetrate tomorrow inshallah if Allah wills aha this is the password he which was missing from the beginning from the story if he say inshallah from the first time this idiot he will be able to get it through but the stupid idiot the leader he keep forgetting to say inshallah do you see brother how important to say inshallah even Gog and Magog they are Muslims hold on how Gog and Magog they are bad but they are Muslims any Abdul how they are how they are evil how they are disgusting how they are bad but yet they say inshallah hmm? let it go let it go and then so he makes exception which means Allah you know Allah he will let them go he said so they return and find it just as it was they left it which means this time Allah did not fix it then they penetrated the brother and here a disaster then they penetrated they Google and Magoog are released upon the upon the people drinking up water and people flee from them because they suck water you know they are thirsty for water they are like elephants you know like they they, they, they suck a lot of water when, if they go to an area the, the area will be dry because they suck a lot of water brother actually I I speak about my uh, uh, my grandfather he used to have a brother he used to have a farm have a lot of water in Sri Lanka and then one day we woke up in the morning in Sri Lanka you know we are Indian originally brother and uh, a person from Gog and Magog he stopped by and we do not know he's from Gog and Magog so we told them you are welcome in the morning we woke up brother we found Sri Lanka dry there's no water all Sri Lanka is dry because they suck all the water now look here they suck up the water and the people flee from them they shoot their arrows into the heaven so they returned died with the blood if 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 what is that the sky is bleeding muslims they shoot their arrows uh, we have to change the color now we cannot use this color no more we are talking about the blood hold on so they shoot their arrows brother at the heaven and the arrows return died with the blood and they say currently arrogantly we vanquish this earth let us demonate and the inhabitants of the heaven now they want to take the heaven too so they finish the earth oof, 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 oof. so the whole earth brother is controlled by Gog and Magog And then Allah will punish them. Allah will punish them, brother. Look what will happen. Allah will send upon them like missiles, attaching to the knob of their necks, destroying them. He said, by the one who is hand of the soul of the Prophet Muhammad, the beast of the earth will become very fat and bloated with milk from their flesh. Anyone knows what is the beast of the earth Muhammad is talking about? 
Anyone knows? <clears throat> Who knows what beast we are talking about? <clears throat> Hmm. What is that, Muslims? The wolves they will eat them. Who or, or this is a jassasa? The beast will come from under the ground. Allah will send it speaking Quran. A brother, the beast will become fat because of their flesh, brother. With their milk and their flesh, milk they have milk. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> So, are you telling me that Mr. Wolf will be suckering from them? Hmm. I see. Any Abdul? Any Abdul? I mean, still you Muslim, you want to say to us that Muhammad is a prophet of God? We have the satellite, they cover every inch in this earth. And nobody find found your damn dam. Hmm? Uh, this guy is annoying. Go to bed, go to bed. You are Abdul, you are stupid. Huh? Where we can find Gog and Magog? So Obviously, everything we say to prove that Muhammad not only a false prophet, this guy is an idiot. He is ignorant. He is full of, of it. Fairy tale stories, stupid stories, and he makes stories, and he, you know, he is he is copying legions of people before him, and he is making it as if it's true. And by the way, this is not only in the hadith, this is in the Quran. As you see, and here it says how he made the dam. So he brought the price, the uh, the pieces of iron, and he, you know, uh, he make it a fire, and then he he bring a Milton copper, and he pure in it, and he made the blocks, and he built the wall. He will go trumpy when I build the wall. Ah, ah, mean Gog and Magog and the story of Zulkar Nain is about Trump, brother. <laughs> build the wall, build the wall. Here we go. The idea of build the wall. You see, you see where Trump he got his idea build the wall, brother sisters. Do you see this kafir a Trump where he got his story or his idea to build the wall from here? And absolutely is true. He is using pieces of irons. Go watch the video, brother. I mean, how you can deny? How you can deny? You cannot deny it. Hmm. Gog and Magog, huh? Muslim, did you find where is Gog and Magog are located? Brother, <clears throat> anyone? Any Abdul? So, guys, did we learn something good today? Did we learn something good? As you see, each time we go online, we share with you tons of evidence, and we connect the dots together, and we prove one re one thing always, that Muhammad is nothing but a scam. I say it as it is. I know there's many people, they are perfectly correct. You know, maybe they don't even dare to say the word, but I say it as it is. Muhammad is a scam. Muhammad is a false prophet. Additional to that, we have from the Bible teaching that Muhammad is an Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist, the Bible says? Whoever denied the Father and the Son. Correct? So we prove every day that Muhammad is a false prophet. He's a liar. He's a scammer. 
Additional to that, we have a clear proof from the Bible that Muhammad is a scam and he is a liar and he is an antichrist. If you don't believe me, believe the Bible. And as you see, I show you everything in the screen. You know, many people, they might make speeches. I don't use a single Christian reference, as you see, even their translation. I'm not using my own translation, as you see. This is their website. This is their translations. This is their stories. This is their reference, printed, published, given to us, preserved to us by them. Who? The Muslims. So what I can do more? Now, it's your duty to help me and to copy those videos and you can cut them pieces depend on the topic like today we spoke about many topics you can cut the video pieces make it 15 20 minutes and then just post it again or if you post the whole video again as you wish depending on your account so my friend we need your help and the help here is not for me for me trust me i am i am i am the last one can be infected with this virus but it's very sad to see someone he is being fooled and he converted to us now same time, we want to save the Muslims. We don't hate the Muslims. We want to save them from this cult. A Muslim, he watched this video, and he have a, you know, he want to be honest with himself. He will not stay a Muslim. Muhammad was a part of Jewish descendant. Who said that to you? No, this is false. This is false. First of all, actually, we do not even know who is Muhammad. There is no proof of whatsoever of the existence of a person his name is Muhammad. Who is Muhammad? Look, the Muslim they say our holy book is the Quran. Okay. The Quran speak about prophets. Some of them he give names about them. Some of them, I mean, who are they? They are the sons of who? As an example, Mary, she is the daughter of Umran. But if we search for Muhammad, we don't find anywhere in the Quran says Muhammad is a son of who? There's a chapter, it's called chapter of Muhammad. But in the chapter of Muhammad, there's nothing about Muhammad. Except Muhammad, uh, when I have money, Muhammad, when I have sex. Chapter 3, verse number 144, it says that Muhammad is just a messenger. And all the apostles before him, they pass away, false translation. Which means the Quran here have a contradiction because if this is true, that means Jesus he passed away. And here you will notice Muhammad, he's a scam again. Anyone notice here what he said? Proving to us that he's a false prophet. Anyone notice something weird in the coming sentence? Let us see if you will notice it. Who noticed with me? There is something very bad, stupid in this verse. Anyone notice? I'm waiting for somebody in the chat to tell me what is wrong in this verse. Dies or slain? Thank you, Philip. Phil. Guys, if he dies or is slain, this is Allah talking. How Allah talking, you do not know how Muhammad will die. Normal death or killed because he don't know Muhammad what will happen to him tomorrow So in order to cover his ass he says if, if he die or get killed <laughs> I mean is there a third is there a third option? <laughs> Why Muhammad don't prophesy how we will how he will die hmm? However, however Muhammad by the way he prophesied how he will die anyone knows how? Anyone knows? But in the wrong way. He got himself busted. Who remember? <clears throat> Look at this. Hamadi said in chapter 69, and you can read it from verse number you know, 44. It says, speaking about Muhammad, and if Muhammad he invented false saying concerning us, which means concerning Allah, supposedly Allah is talking, we assuredly had taken him by his right hand and severely uh, 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 his life artery. We will cut his life artery. So if Muhammad he is liar, Allah will do this to him. 
This is a prophecy. Look what happened. Read carefully. This is exactly how Muhammad died. The prophet in his element of death, which he uh, which he died, used to say, Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel my orta being cut off from that poison. Do you see it? Do you see it, Muslims? Muhammad, he thought never, that will never happen to him. He said, Allah said, if I am lying, he will cut my orta. But this is how we die. So even Muhammad, when he said, I am not lying, he got himself busted again. And I believe what happened, by the way, that our Lord, not the Lord of Muhammad, he made Muhammad get exposed in uh, by saying that, which means he 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 like he he lead him to do to such a death. And to say that statement, to admit how he is dying. By admitting how he died, he just proved to us again from the Quran that he is a liar because the Quran says it clearly that if Muhammad is a liar Allah will cut his artery as you see and yeah this is the only prophecy Muhammad he said is true <laughs> that's funny isn't it <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! I wanna, I wanna convert to Islam, brother. Oops, 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 brother. The 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 poison I ate uh, in Mecca is cutting my artery now, brother. Christian Prince is a prophet, and I swear by Allah, if I'm lying to you, Allah will cut my artery. Oops, 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 my artery is hurting me. I mean, what is that? And which make it more funny too. Muhammad, he said, you know, I mean, this guy, he cannot keep his mouth shut. And I'm so glad that Muhammad, he keep, I mean, this guy, you see, if Muhammad, he keep his mouth shut, we will not be able to laugh that much. But thanks to God, this guy, his mouth is like a <laughs> pop-up window. Uh, Muhammad, he died by poison and he was infected by magic. And Muhammad, he claimed to be a doctor. Doctor Muhammad, let us do. Let us be honest here. Let us not to call him Muhammad no more. Muhammad is a doctor. Muhammad. Muhammad, he said, if you eat seven ajwa a day, no magic can affect you, neither poison. But yet Muhammad, according to Muslims and according to Muhammad, he was infected by both magic. And poison. Any Abdul? <coughs> yeah, seven ajwa is seven palm date fruits, you know. The date, the ajwa, it's, I mean, the Muslim translation is very silly, stupid. I mean, ajwa, why you call it? Just translate. I mean, why you keep the word there? <laughs> yeah we are we we will come abdul to debate us my friend but at the end of the day we want we want people who uh, know what they are talking about i don't want to waste my time with kids you see, always for years I open my sky for anyone to call me, correct? And you, know, you are my witness. But enough is enough. I mean, we made our point. We want people who claim to be scholars. And you know, I mean, if you not if you notice when you debate a kid, it's harder than debating someone he is educated, like a sheikh about Islam. Because that one will be responsible for what he say. But a kid, he can say whatever he wants. I mean. You know, he can lie as much as he wants. He can play games. I mean, it's a kid. So for me, you know, it's not worth it. 
I know that many of you want to maybe have fun you want to laugh but for me it is not fun really yeah we want to make you laugh at the shake that that is worth it do you remember the debate with this guy with his name Sheikh Abdul Wadud this is like this is a shake go and watch it and see what happened you will cry laughing Why 686 is important to Muslims? They are not important to Muslims. Those are fabrications. Those numbers all is fabrication, my friend. I mean, look at the disaster we have here. But because they are bankrupt, they fabricate. They fabricate things. You know, prediction, uh, the miracle of number seventeen, this uh, nineteen. I mean, all of this is false. All right. I mean, look at the stupidity in front of us, and then they they try to find like uh, Shabir Ali. He says, if you look at the number nineteen, brother, and I got them busted easy. If you have my book, the deception of Allah and Quran and science, you will see how I got them busted easy. But my friend, when somebody is bankrupt. You see, for me, I do not need for, to look for a number to prove to you Jesus, who is Jesus. I do not need that. But when you have a false, stupid prophet like Muhammad, you are desperate. Sometimes they want to find Muhammad in the Bible because they cannot prove him to be a prophet in the Quran. They can prove him to be a prophet in the, in the Hadith. We got them busted so easy. So now what we will do, suddenly they try to find Muhammad in the Bible. But they make fun of our Bible. They say it's corrupt. It says it's false. And suddenly Muhammad is in the Bible. But look, look at this. Even that, if you are educated, it's easy to get them busted. Why? Look what the Quran says. <clears throat> Many of you heard that they say that the Bible says that Muhammad is the converter. Is that correct? But if you go read there, you will see that the converter is a spirit who will be with us forever. Muhammad is a man. He's dead. And not only that. The Quran said that if Jesus speak, when Jesus speak, or he did speak about, about a prophet, he will come after him. His name is Ahmed. So who is Muhammad? Do you see it? So if the Muslims, they can find something about Jesus speaking about their prophet, it should be Ahmed, not Muhammad. And it should be Jesus saying that but because they are desperately trying to find to make anything about their prophet uh, Alex uh, uh, Alex Stoop I don't know why you are writing for me in Arabic because your Arabic is horrible are you using Google I mean how I can answer you with this Arabic it's just don't use Google I don't understand the word of your question. You keep posting in Arabic. I have no idea what you are saying. Do we have any Abdul? Any Abdul? Muslims claim that the water of Zamzam is a miracle. Well, you can go and search right now in the BBC investigation. They found that the Zamzam water is full of arsenic, which means it's a po very poisoning water. A drinking a bottle of uh, uh, Zamzam is like a dr uh, uh, smoking two cigarettes, two two box of cigarettes. After they published that, the Muslim they put a lot of a pressure in the BBC to to take off and to apologize. Go and watch it in YouTube. And by the way, if if the water of Zamzam is very good, why Muslims in, in in the city of Mecca they die so early? Guys, there's a video. I wish I can play it for you. <clears throat> An Egyptian scientist, supposedly, he is in TV. Hold on, let me try to find. I will not play it because you know they will they will claim copyright over it. <clears throat> Give me a second.
so this uh, this Egyptian he said that the graffiti in Mecca is zero <laughs> which means if you go to Mecca you have zero weight <laughs> you will fly as if you are in the moon brother and not only that he said that when the American brother they went to the moon they found an x-ray of light coming all the way from the Kaaba brother and going all the way to the house of Allah and they published that in the internet for 17 days hold on hold on when the American they went to the moon is that 1969 there was no internet published in the for public at that time they published it for 17 days okay Muslims now you have many satellites why you don't take a snapshot of the x-ray and why we can see the x-ray from the moon we can see it from the earth so I mean unbelievable and the Muslims they Alhamdulillah Akbar brother Allah Akbar Allah Akbar and the American the American brother when they saw the X-ray brother is taken coming from the, the house of Allah, they publish it for 17 days in the internet and then they hide it because they thought that a lot of people will convert to Islam if they see the scientific news. Do you see how they deceive each other? Search for this video and you can watch it and you can laugh. You can make a video about it if you want. I mean, if you are a person who have a channel you like, you like to make videos you can make a video about them get them but I made a video about them long time ago lies after lies this is how they can keep Islam alive by fooling the fool the birds cannot fly over Mecca yeah there is there's tons of pictures of not only the birds are flying over Mecca the birds is beep over Mecca over the Kaaba specifically And actually, I post a picture in my Facebook. If you go back to the Facebook, you will see the picture I posted. So when they say to you that there is no, all, all of this is garbage. I mean, even the Kaaba was destroyed many times. Al-Qurmuti, he destroyed the Kaaba and he took the black stone from the Kaaba and he was shouting to Allah, says he, Allah, where is your birds, the one who protect the Kaaba? Because remember, in the Quran, there's a chapter, it's called the chapter of the elephant. Alhamdulillah, the Quran is the book of the zoo. I mean, you feel like you are in the zoo book. Even the elephant have a chapter. What is this story about, the chapter of the elephant? That supposedly an army of elephant will come and destroy the Kaaba, brother. But Allah, he sent birds, F-16 birds. And they are carrying rocks made from burned clay. And they throw them at the head of the army and at the elephant. And they mash them like mashed potato. So why the Saudi are buying the F-16 of the American? And what, Allah will protect you. And then al qurmuti he came and he destroyed the Kaaba. And he made the black stone, his purple stone, for more than 20 years. And he was shouting to Allah, where is your birds, liar? This is why in the time of Al-Qurmati, a lot of Muslims left Islam. You see, Islam is dead, by the way. Islam died long time ago. The Islam you see today, or the flourishing of Islam, this is the oil money. This is the oil money. This is the business. You are a newspaper, you are a TV stations. You want to make money? Publish things, good things about Islam. Money will come like rain. If now I, if I am now a person who pr promote Islam, can you imagine how much donation I will collect? And instead of having a, a donation like uh, the majority of people who donate is a dollar, two dollars, five dollars. Rarely you will find somebody giving a good amount. But if I'm a Muslim, promoting Islam, donation will come like rain. Look at Zach and Naik. Zach and Naik, he have TV stations covering the whole earth. 
Do you know how much money that need every month just to pay for satellite? All is from donation. Promote the devil, you will be sponsored immediately. You make a book saying Muhammad is the best prophet and your name is uh, James uh, Thompson. Huh? You will make a lot of money from it. All right? ISIS, they believe if they kill the women, they will go to hell. That's not true. Muhammad himself, he killed women. That is a false statement. And ISIS, they killed a lot of women. Same as Muhammad. So who told you that? The guy who destroyed the Kaaba, obviously, he is not a Muslim no more. He's a, he is originally he is a Shia, Al Qurmuti. He is a Shia, or from the Shia, but obviously he don't believe in Islam no more. And he was like a communist, like a, a person who believed that uh, people should own the land and the rights, and nobody should own. There's no kings, there's no princes, there's etc. And uh, uh, you know, Islam is a stupid religion, and he destroyed the Kaaba. And then when the Muslims they wanted to have the black stone back, they have to bribe him. Allah could not get it back. They paid him money to get the black stone back. <clears throat> no, Shia are not atheists. This is not a true. I mean, some people they say sometimes they say say things is really weird. I say that this guy have a communist idea. I did not say the Shia are atheist. The Shia are even more dangerous than the Sunni. The Shia are more dangerous than the Sunni. Both of them, they are two faces of one coin. The Shia Iran, right now, every morning they say death to America, death to Israel, before they take their breakfast. The Shia Hezbollah, they killed more than 300, 200 Marines in Lebanon. They are the first suicide bomber. The first suicide bomber in the Middle East, it was a Shia, not a Sunni. But people, they have little knowledge. About al qurmuti search it in Google. Type al qurmuti destroy the Kaaba. al Kaaba was destroyed many times, not only by al qurmuti even destroyed by Sunni, like Al-Hajjaj. Hmm? Yeah, the Shia are, are more dangerous because they play taqiyya more than the Sunni. The, Sh the Shia, in air, in 99 words he say, only one of them is not a lie, maybe. There's a guy, his name Imam Tawhidi. You know Imam, Imam Tawhidi? This guy is a train of lies. This guy, he he, he don't talk, he lies. You know, uh, because he's a, he's a Shia. He tried to present himself that... He reject bad things in, in uh, this is not Islam, brother. This is, you know, but the fact he is evil. Those are more dangerous than the one who say things as it is because they can fool you. You know what I mean? And this is the point. He became popular. And now people, they think, oh, this is the true Islam now. Many of the fool, they've been fooled. This is the whole point. <clears throat> uh, want to reform Islam uh, you see how many of you here you believe you can reform Islam how many of you believe in such a garbage you can reform Islam how you can reform Islam are you going to are you going to reform the Quran in order to reform Islam you have to have a new book how you can reform Islam? Are we going to reform the Hadith? Are we going to throw this Quran in the garbage and get a new Quran that says love the Christians, love the Jews? And this is a stupid idea, silly. I mean, you see, if you are a donkey, I cannot make you a horse. Sorry. In China, they say he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse.
when when somebody believes that there is something is called moderate Muslim, that is a big fat lie. In order to have a moderate Muslim, we have to have a moderate Quran. It's the same as saying moderate Christian. That's a that's a lie too. If there is something, guys, is there is something called moderate Christian? Anyone believe there is something is called moderate Christians? Either you are Christian or you are not. What you will have moderate Jesus too? <laughs> we will have moderate Moses, huh? We will have moderate uh, uh, Isaac. We will have moderate. Uh, I mean, what? What is that? This is stupid. A human being, a human being. Sometimes he present the foolishness. I mean, you do not need to explain foolishness. Just, just open your TV and and listen. George Bush he created moderate and radical. Eh, come on, eh, this is a politics guy. This is a, this is a guy who speak politics. You know, ninety percent of politics talk is a lie. It's politics. Don't mention those. We talk about religion. Don't mention to me presidents. Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, always, always, you know, uh, uh, think carefully about what people they try to give you as an idea to believe in it. When somebody uh, give you an idea, I mean, use your brain. Don't don't be a fool. Just uh, you know, accept what people say to you blindly. Communist is a communist. Christians are Christians. Muslims are Muslims, Jews are Jews. Anyone he say moderate Jew, moderate Christian, moderate. I mean, that's a lie. At least communists they can change their book because they don't have a holy book. There is nothing is called moderate. Either you are a like they say to you, I am a Christian but not conservative. That's mean you are you are not a Christian. If you say I am not conservative, a Christian, that's mean you are not a Christian. You are not a believer. As simple as that. What what moderate Christian? That is just a person who want to lie to at himself. Either you believe or you don't believe. Either you, you follow Jesus as he said or you don't. There's no so-so. It's what Jesus said. Either you are hot or cold. Hot water or cold water, which means if you are between, you know, you taste so bad. Don't talk politics. Stay in Islam. Islam is politics, by the way. All of Islam is politics. <clears throat> For those who speak Arabic, search a guy his name Iraqi Shia Sheikh Ahmed Hassan Ali Al Qabiji. Yeah, but this Al Qabiji is a guy who he claimed that uh, the Muslims today they are following the wrong Islam, which means still he is being hypocrite too. And this guy is playing games. Why you don't say Islam is wrong and that's it? I saw one of his videos. No, those stories are, are, you know, are fabricated. I says they will be scared to go by, by, uh, you see, the Quran says that you will kill and you will be killed. How you will be killed, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> uh All those verses in the front of us is speaking about killing. How you die is not really important. 
by the hand of a female or by the hand of a male. That's stupid. And now you watch a TV and you believe what they say to you in TV. Do we have any Abdul? Anything else? Do you have a hadith about Allah is not a spirit? Uh, no, it's not about hadith. Actually, for me, I can prove that Allah has a spirit. But Islamic religion believe that he has no spirit. So we have to go by what, you know, when you debate somebody about his belief, you debate him about his belief, not about what you think. Right? Why Muhammad claimed that Allah is not a spirit? Makes sense, especially idea. No, Muhammad, he did not say. You see, the Muslims, the Muslims, Islam is a is a collection of stupid ideas. It's not it's not just Muhammad saying things. So, as an example, where in the Quran it says that Jibreel is the Holy Spirit? Nowhere. But if you ask any Muslim, he will say to you, the Holy Spirit is Jibreel. But based on the Quran, there is no way Jibreel is the Holy Spirit, and we can prove that. The same as the Spirit, the same Allah has a Spirit or not. But at the end of the day, when you debate somebody about his religion, you don't make your own religion. Say, oh no, I'm going to show you from your Quran that Allah has a Spirit. Even if, it, even if you can prove it. Because at the end of the day, you are debating him about what he believes, not what it is. Do you understand me? Like, I don't waste my time speaking if Muhammad is exist or not. Because a Muslim, he believes he exists. So why I want to debate about it? I mean, that's useless. That's it. Debate him about what he believes. Destroy it. <clears throat> just search right now in Google you will see this is the fatwa the Muslim fatwa that Allah is not a spirit every Muslim believe in that I mean if you believe Allah has a spirit you are not a Muslim that you are out of Islam I mean why the Muslim he don't search himself search type two words in uh, in Google is Allah is a spirit the answer no Why we have to do the whole job for the Muslims? But, you know, I, I'm sure many of you witness me debating Muslims, and we ask them this question, is Allah a spirit? They say yes in the beginning. After we spank them here and there, they go and they come back and they say, uh-oh, uh, sorry, I was mistaken, Allah is not a spirit. This is an Islamic official website from Saudi Arabia by Sheikh uh, Saleh al Munjid. Islam, question and answer, Sheikh Saleh al Munjid, very well known Sunni cleric. He is debating with the Christians and he is asking, Does God have a spirit? Which means Allah? The answer is no. As simple as that. The spirit or a soul is not one of the attributes of Allah. Do you see it? So this is what they believe. Allah has no spirit. He is just a physical being. And actually, I believe this is a good thing because that will make it easier for me to prove Islam to be stupid. Because if Allah is a physical being 
and he has no spirit so he is a statue he is a rock because the spirit is the power of life uh, Elena asking is there's hadith about uh, well there's many hadith about those about Muhammad uh, uh, doing uh, let us say uh, what they call it not uh, sex as sex like uh, kissing her touch her touching her uh, you know playing with her during the time of fasting even sucking her tongue yeah anyway uh, my advice to you when you debate with Muslims don't debate them about something they don't believe in and don't debate them about what you believe see the the problem of uh, Christians when we debate someone is a Muslim right away we start saying things to them which does not make sense to them I will give you an example a Christian uh, preacher right away he see a Muslim he says to you convert to Jesus so you can be saved by the blood of Jesus like this guy he do not know what are you talking about what the blood of Jesus that's it you hit him right away with the blood of Jesus and then you say we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus now he would think that we Christians because Jesus he died we are just so forgiven that's not, not true Jesus said clearly that not everyone says to me Lord Lord God God Jehovah Jehovah will go to heaven but the one who do is well so it's not just being a Christian and believing in him and because he crucified we go to heaven we are you know this is not true so some Christians they made Muslims run away from a Christianity because Muslim they've been told lies about us already the Muslim they teach they teach their their their, their followers that Christian believe that their sin is gone because Jesus died for them that's not true that's absolutely false so when you say those statement you sponsor the lies the Muslim they speak about us we don't have automatic forgiveness in Christianity and we don't have a license for for sin what 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 some Christians they when they speak about Christianity they make it look like we Christians we have a license to sin here we go Jesus died on the cross that's it we are saved so now I can go and work as a pimp and you can go and work as a whore and you can go and you can uh, uh, work as a drug dealer that's it Jesus died in the cross that's a lie we don't believe in that so Christians have to learn how to speak to somebody especially like Muslims the first step you do don't talk about Jesus first don't even mention the Bible you know the Bible says don't throw the jewels where you know where right so you have to be careful first of all don't speak about a holy book in the front of somebody he will not respect it the first thing you do you format the computer the Muslim have a computer he have a lot of uh, false false information so you have to destroy those information in his head after you destroy it now he is ready to receive before that you are wasting your time this is why when i debate a muslim and you saw many muslims leaving islam life on air and actually by the way i still get a lot of messages in skype of muslims leaving islam uh, but i don't talk about jesus right away to them first i made them agree i discuss with them i explain to them i prove to them that Muhammad is a false prophet after that everything is possible before that it's a waste of time after that you bring Jesus to them why must them believe in 72 versions when it make no sense because those version are a spirit or really physical women no they are women they are women they are women and they have a vagina uh, uh, even the Quran says that all right if you have my book sex and Allah the whole book is about sex and Allah so those are not spirits and this is a, this is additional problem Western or non-Western who they are Christian or not Christians 
when they speak to Muslims, they think Muslims are, as an example, when we when the Muslim they say genie, Christian person he says, Oh, this is a demon. No, the Muslim don't believe in demon. They don't. When a Muslim he say adultery, adultery in Islam is not the adultery in Christianity. In Islam, you can do adultery, but you have to do it in a legal way. Even the Quran says you can do prostitution. Force not your slave girls to do prostitution unless, you know, I mean, if they if they wish chastity, which mean, they ask them, do you like to be prostitute? And even if force them, there's no punishment, there's no penalty. As long as they are slaves, you can force them to do prostitution. If you force them, Allah don't like that. He prefer if you ask them, do you like it? But even if you force them, there's no penalty, there's no sin. And slaves always in Islam they use for sex. Even they do use to exchange them between the owners, which means you can give me a few of your slaves. I give you like I'm I'm bored of the slaves I have. I'm sleeping with her for for two years now. I can't afford to buy a new brand new one. So I go to you, give me your slave, I will give you my slave. Exchange. Exchange of goods. So always the Christians they assume. That when a Muslim he says something, he is talking about the same thing in Christianity. God in Islam is not the same as the God of Christianity. Our God is a spread, their God is not. God in Islam have a description, nature, existence is totally different from the God of Christianity. But because a human being is always naive, you know, like, okay, a Hindu, he say the word God, that's mean he's talking about God. But maybe his God is not what you think. You know, like in India, I'm not talking about now a specific, uh, like I'm talking about a specific group. I saw a documentary about a temple in India. They worship rats. Rats. Okay. But it will never come to your head that somebody is going to worship rat when you say God. So try to isolate that idea from your head. What you have about God in your belief. Don't assume it is the same about the God of the other belief. You know what I mean? They say genie, we say demon. That, but demon are not genie. Christians they go to their churches and then they will find right away a priest is deceiving them by saying that Arab are from Ishmael How you come to that? Copy paste. I never saw a church. Don't say that All the churches they say Arab are from Ishmael <laughs> Did you ever ask the priest where you get from from? Anyone ask the priest when he says to you the Arab are from Ishmael where do you get this from? Nobody asked. Copy paste. Like the Muslims. One day, somehow, somebody said that the Arab are from Ishmael. And everybody is uh, uh, Arab from Ishmael. Arab are not even ethnic. Arab are not ethnic. The word Arab mean it's an Aramaic word, which means people who live in the desert. As simple as that. It is not an ethnic. Uh, but anyway, we have a, we have an illness in the society of copy paste. Yeah, Osama Dagdo translation. I did not read it, all of it, but I believe is 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 good. The Arab, the Arab, all the Arab are Bedouin. Uh, this is the origin of the, the this is what Arab mean. Uh, Arab mean people of the desert. It's not an ethnic group. Whoever whoever live in that in that desert, he is an Arab. Which means if the Arab make they meet you and you live in Nevada at that time and you have a tent, they call you Arab. It's not an it's not a name of a, a, a nation. 
All right. Even Arabic does not exist as a language we have it today. This is after a lot of changes. Arabic is a collection of Aramaic, Hebrew, uh, Ethiopian, uh, Egyptian, uh, Persian, tons of words. If you go in the Quran, I mean, you will find endless numbers of foreign words. <clears throat> but if you do not know, you do not know. Even the name of the Quran, the word Quran, is not Arabic. But yet the funny, the Quran itself says that this is a pure Arabic. And by the way, the Muslims agree. The Muslims agree that there's tons of words in the Quran which is not Arabic. And they explain that, okay, well, there's many words in the Quran are not Arabic, but the reason, uh, but that, but that will not make the Quran not Arabic still, because still the majority of the word are Arabic. But the fact Arabic language does not exist. Everything you see in front of you, maybe eighty to ninety percent, is Aramaic, coming from the Aramaic. Uh, you know, the Muslim as an example. Let us see this verse. Chapter 16, verse number 103. Anyone knows what this verse is about? Why, why Muhammad is making this verse? Muhammad was accused that he sat with two guys who they are slaves, captured from north of Iraq. North of Iraq. Some stories, they say that those are Christians from Syria, regardless who they are. They accuse him that Muhammad is learning from them and you know copying what they say and he said the Quran which means the Quran is made by those two so Muhammad in order to answer them look what he said we know certainly they say that this is only human instruction him and if you go to the details you will see the names of those people and they say and now Muhammad is refuting them says but those two slaves don't speak pure Arabic. Why the Quran is a pure Arabic? <laughs> what a funny answer. You do not need them to speak pure Arabic to make pure Arabic Quran if you are an Arab. You listen to them, you make the story in Arabic. As simple as that. You know what I mean? Let us say an, an Indian guy who speak uh, broken Arabic. And he told me a story. Can't I make it in a good, uh, good Arabic sto story? You can, because your language is better than mine. Aramaic and Arabic are not sister language. That's a lie. There is nothing is called Arabic language. Actually, I believe strongly that the first Quran never written in Arabic. It was in Aramaic. Arabic is born of many languages. It's a mix. It's a cocktail of languages. Even the word Quran is not Arabic. Look, what is the first verse Muhammad you receive? Anyone knows? What is the first verse Muhammad received? Chapter. When the angel, he came and he squeezed him. You remember? Okay. The Muslim they change they play with the Quran and now it's number 96 according to Muslims look look what the Quran says Iqra 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 is an Aramaic word but this wrong this word is wrong anyone knows why it's wrong anyone knows what's wrong who knows If Muhammad do not know how to read, why he's saying to him read? 
<laughs> That's stupid. So the first word in the Quran is a stupid word. Imagine you are a blind and I say to you, look at me. You know what I mean? Imagine you are deaf and I say to you, hear me. No, it does not say recite. However, the word recite, and all of you speak English better than me, recite is repeating something from the memory. So that cannot be recite. Because that would be stupid too. For I cannot say to you recite unless I say to you something before it, you remember it. Correct? This is the first word he's been given. So what recite? So Muslims are naive. I mean, recite. What recite? The word in Arabic is ikhra, not recite. There's no recitation here. Number two, recite in the name of your Lord, the one who created, but the Quran says there's many creators, including Jesus. Then he says he created the insan from alaq, but that's stupid. He did not create the insan from alaq. Alaq, simply, that when the human being, uh, when the man have sex with the woman, uh, if you remember Muhammad speak about in the chapter of an nur that in the, uh, the first thing you are a water you are a sperm and then he will make he will make you a congealed blood that is alaq so we are not made from alaq that's stupid alaq is a congealed blood change the translation this is who translator uh, carry good is not carry Carry. Let us go. Here we go. Do you see it? That's a stupid mistake. He created the man of a blood clot. Do you see it? So every every verse in the Quran is a disaster of his stupidity. And look, here we change the translator. Look what happened. This guy he's saying recite. That is stupid, right? We explain to you why. Because the word recite is repeating something in your memory. Same time, let us change it. Let us give it all the options. Repeat, repeat. Forget about recite, forget about read. But isn't it the story in the hadith says, Muhammad, he says, I cannot recite or I cannot read or I cannot repeat. That would be stupid. Why I, cannot, why I will say I cannot repeat? By saying the word repeat, you just repeat. Just to make it simple for you, if the word here, which is a lie, is recite, and you say to me, recite, just one word, and I say to you, I cannot recite. I mean, who is the stupid here? I just repeated what you told me to do. It's like saying to you, I cannot say recite. Do you guys do you understand? People, do you understand me? It's like I say to you, say falafel. And you, you say to me, I cannot say falafel. But you just said falafel already. Do you understand? I'm just trying to make it simple for you. So the whole story is stupid. So it is, it is read. So now Muhammad says, I cannot read. Okay, that makes sense. But here... That makes sense, Muhammad saying that, but that not make sense, Allah saying that. That, be, that. that mean Allah is stupid. Because how Allah, he said to Muhammad, read, don't he know that Muhammad do not know how to read? If it is recite, how Muhammad will say, I cannot recite, he's just dead. If it's repeat, how Muhammad will say, I cannot repeat when he did? Otherwise, we will not know about the verse. So the whole story is stupid. And look, right away, the mistake about science, Allah created the man from a clot and then says, read in the name of your uh, 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 generous Lord, the one who taught by the pen. How you Muslim you say to us that Muhammad is a literate man and Allah, he never teach anyone except by the pen. Do you see it? Al-Qalam 
is not an Arabic word. And how Allah he taught by the pen. The Muslim they say to you that the first thing Allah he created it was the pen. He created the pen and he said to him, Re, uh, 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 write down. And the pen wrote everything. <laughs> Anyone knows why this story is stupid? About uh, Allah having a tablet and he ordered the pen to write everything? What, what do you think? Why this is stupid? Allah, he wrote a tablet. To go to chapter 80 to 85 verse number 22 Allah he wrote a tablet and he guarded the tablet now why Allah he need a tablet why we need a book why me and you we have a book because simply first of all we are not eternal we will not live forever we will die number two we don't have absolute memory we have we suffer from memory loss regardless if you are young or old doesn't matter there's no way you can remember anything I mean all, all the time so we have books for a reason God have a book for what especially this book nobody can read it and Allah he put it between the two eyes of Israfil Israfil is a big angel Allah he put it between his eyebrows it's a huge tablet the distance between the tablet is the same distance between the earth and the heaven. So if God he wrote, he will write for us, not for him. As an example, God he gave Moses the tablet. But this is for Moses, not for God. Why God need a tablet? No answer. Ahmed Baalbaki, uh, yes, I remember you, Ahmed. How are you? I left Islam. How I can call you to discuss uh, Christianity? It takes me in Skype, my friend. When we are, uh, when uh, like now, I am here for many hours. Baalbaki, uh, when I am, uh, uh, maybe next time you can text me and I will call you. All right, my friend. Yeah, Ahmed Baalbaki. If you remember him, uh, he is a Lebanese who called me before live on air, and he decided to leave Islam. Live on air with us. You remember him? Yeah. Welcome, uh, Balbaki. So all the Quran, it does not make sense. Everything there, from the first verse to the last verse, it's a collection of stupidity. Uh, look at this here. Didn't you see the one who forbid? No, we did not see the one who forbid. Did you see? <laughs> How you say to us, Allah is unseen, and then you say, did you see the one who forbid? I mean, stupidity is beyond imagination sometimes. And to be honest with you, one of the reasons I don't really associate too much with many people because when I sit with them, I found myself, I belong to different galaxy. I hate stupidity. I cannot take it. Actually, I fear it. Because it's an, it's like a, it's a pain for my brain. It's a, it's an insult for my existence. Human being, he being, you know, being given a gift, it's called a brain, but nobody want to use it. Read, think deeply. Don't be just a person who reads. Read, read and laugh. Stupidity is an illness. And we can fight this illness if you decide to use your brain. But many of us we are lazy. We don't want to. We don't. We want somebody else to use his brain. You know, even when I watched uh, something like comedy show, I don't laugh because I find it silly. 
like you play a YouTube and then suddenly you see a woman she said to you my mom she said to me when you shave your the legs of your legs the hair of your legs shave until here anybody laughing ha <laughs> ha I mean people they really pay money for this and this is funny this is telling you how silly you can be as a human if this is something you pay money for to go to the theater to see an idiot woman in the stage saying to you such a stupid joke who is the stupid the one who paid the money or who is the one or, or the one on the stage you tell me Islam is no different this is why Islam can it, it can find its place between the stupid ones I challenge any Muslim to find me one chapter in the Quran is not a joke. Any chapter, anything. I mean, just name it. Open, like, close the Quran, open the page, tell me this page, and I will show you how stupid it is. This is how this is how sure I am that I can get the Quran busted in every single page in it. Anyway, uh, I hope that's you know what we do here is is a very good education for people. Netanyahu is elected. Uh, I think me me my personally I don't like Netanyahu because I believe he's a corrupt person. However. Better than having somebody from the left in Israel. If the left took over, they will give Jerusalem to the to the uh, to, to the Muslims. So sometimes you find yourself you have no better choice. It's not uh, the same as in America. You know, in America they put in front of us in the stage like twenty donkeys, and then they say to us, "Choose one of them." So what you choose? You choose the one who will kick you less. But all of them they are donkeys. So maybe he is for now the best for Israel, but he is not the best, not for me. The best between those who they are going for election. Israel need a real leader, brave man, a man who can be the new, you know, like a, let us say a brave like David. Those guys are politics, politicians. Everything is for sale, compromise. You know, look at them. They give they give the desert of Sinai to the, to Egyptian. What they got from that? Nothing. A piece of paper says peace. Hey, nice to meet you. Soon the Egyptian will be stronger than you, and they will attack you. They give the the East Bank to what is called Palestinian. What they got from that? Nothing. And by giving the land to the Egyptian, now the 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 people of Gaza they smuggle. You know the Egyptian. I mean they open for them the land to smuggle all the weapon they want. So what you did, I mean, stupid. So you keep giving land after land after land, and then you find that you have nothing except a farm, little farm. This is what stupid politics they do. Real leaders of Israel, they will not give an inch. This is their land. Even the Quran in chapter 5, verse number 21 says, this is the land of the Jews. Is that right? Leaders, my friend, leaders can destroy nations and they can build no nations. Look at look at Russia. When Putin he took over Russia, the Russian people, poor people, they were suffering badly. Russian women they became sex toys for sale, sadly. Just because of having bad leaders before them. Putin came and look at Russia now. The Russian, the Russian, which is supposedly coming from out of a communist, now they have more billionaires than anyone in the world. Very rich country. Leader, leader can destroy. Look at the Trump. 
Trump he took the office the country was going down now the economy is going up so fast what happened it's the same country just change the leader so there's many kingdoms they've been destroyed because of their stupid kings and there's many kingdoms they establish because they have a smart one sadly in the West most of people they don't go by media TV I mean there's good people there they can be perfect for you to be a ruler but they will not be there because they don't have the money you have to be sponsored by the power of the devil to be there All right what about Jesus is the leader of the whole world my friend we are talking about the war today Jesus he says I am not from this earth I am from above so he is not the king of this earth the king of this earth is the devil All right uh, uh, look this guy Muslim a uh, uh, proper he said look at this guys just to give you an example of the Muslims' uh, intelligence. Uh, CP, don't lie. The Holy Land was given to Abraham, and this is a descendant, Arab, hard descendant of Abraham, same as the children of Israel. That's stupid of you, because the Quran never says that the Holy Land was given to Abraham. You must be a fool and eating too much hashish. I am even showing you the verse in the Quran, you idiot. I mean, look at them. They say to me, you are a liar when I am showing them the Quran. Can you show me the verse in the Quran saying that Allah, he gave the Holy Land to Abraham? Here we go. I'm here for you. I will give you, you know what? I will give you 10,000 years from now. Give me the verse. This is the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 20, 21. Allah, he ordered Moses Allah, he ordered to go and attack the land and he called it the Holy Land. Are you there, Abdul? Look what will happen now. He will put his nose behind his toes and he will say, I don't hear you, I'm, I'm deaf. Secondly, how Abraham is the father of the Arab, even if he, even your book says that Ishmael, he learned Arabic at the age of 11. <laughs> Which means there was Arab before him. So how he can be the father of the Arab, you donkey? And not only that, another surprise. According to Muslim books, Ishmael, he did marry from the tribe of Jaham. But Jaham are the enemy of Muhammad. So how he married from the tribe of Jaham, who they are the enemy of the tribe of Muhammad, and they are the father of Muhammad? Jesus came from India. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus came from India. No problem. Any Abdul? Are you there, uh, Muslim Piyap or uh, rapper, whatever your name? What happened to Abraham's story? He is searching Prophet Google now. How Google can help him? Same time, Ishmael, okay, guys, let me show you the stupidity here. I am an Arab. I will marry a Chinese woman or a, a German woman or a French woman. Okay, let us say this. So if I am an Arab and I marry a Chinese, my son will be German? This is what they claim. Ishmael, Ishmael is a son of who? Is a son of Abraham. Okay, from who? From Hajar. The father is Aramaic. The mother, the mother is Egyptian. The son is Arab. Have you ever heard of a stupid story like this before?
But Muhammad and the Muslims, because they are desperate, trying to make Abraham is the grandfather of Muhammad, so that will make him legitimate to be a prophet. But that will not be right. Even in the Quran, we can get him busted from the Quran. <clears throat> Let us see. Read with me. Chapter 6, verse number 84. And we gave him Isaac and Jacob. Hey, Muhammad, where is Ishmael? Uh, Ishmael will appear in different place. So why he did not mention him here? Let me tell you why. We gave him Isaac and Jacob, and each we guided. Why, why Ishmael is not mentioned? Muhammad at that time he was trying to be hypocrite to the Jews. He knew that the Jews don't care for uh, for Ishmael. So okay, you know, you know, you know. Okay, here we go. I sponsor Isaac. I sponsor uh, Jacob. All right, no problem. Muhammad. Different verse. <clears throat> Another bust. Chapter 29, the chapter of the spider, the zoo again. And we gave him Isaac and Jacob, and we appointed prophethood from his seeds. Look at the funny translation. Do you see it? Which seed, guys, he mentioned here in the verse? Any, anyone anyone, notice what seed he mentioned? What the seeds? The verse is so clear, is it? What is the seed of prophethood? Isaac and Jacob. From those is the prophethood. So how Muhammad is a prophet? If Even if you claim he is from Ishmael. Right? So even the Quran proved Muhammad to be a false man. Uh, Ahmed, don't think about my accent and where I am from. Think about what we are talking about, my friend. Do you see it, guys? Even the Quran confirmed that the prophethood is have to be from the Jews. Yes, from Abraham, but Isaac and Jacob. Where is Ishmael? What happened? Remember, Ishmael is the old, is the elder, right? So we should mention Ishmael first, actually. Is that clear? There's no reason to drop Ishmael. Ishmael should be the first in the names when you mention his kids because he's the older. So don't make them fool you. Even the Christian ministers who say to you, the Arab are from Ishmael, he is a fool. The one who says that to you, like the Bible says, don't say to the a person who, a fool, you know, because that's wrong. But if he's a fool, we have the right to say it. That's foolish. Don't say fool when it's not right. But if somebody is saying foolishness, he's a fool. So don't listen to them when they say that. This is for the propaganda of Islam, for the benefit of Islam. Muhammad is not from Ishmael. This is number one. Ishmael is not an Arab. This is number two. And if I marry someone, a woman, she is from different ethnic, that will make my children from that ethnic. That means Musa himself is, is an Arab or he is a Bedouin. Isn't it Musa, he marry a woman from the, from the Bedouin? Is that true, guys? Why nobody says the children of Musa are Arab? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway but uh, what we can say 
stupidity. Stupidity. Anyway, guys, uh, be nice to our visitors, please. Don't insult them. There's no need to say somebody you are, you know, etc. Be nice. Uh, and you see, we give a freedom to everybody to speak, but there's no no need to insult anyone. Attack the idea. The only one you can insult is a Christian prince. Anyone will insult anyone in the text, even if he's a Muslim. You force me to block you. We are not here like a bunch of kids throwing rocks. We are debating a topic and we are teaching. So either you like it or you go into a different place where you can say the effort and you can say whatever you want. Nobody is holding you here. Is that good? And if you are a Christian, remember to be Christian before of all, before of everything. We are attacking, we are fighting the devil, yes, but doesn't mean we are going to be the devil himself. So, talk as a Christian, remember to be Christians, and be a, and like uh, present Christianity to people, you know, be a rude. And, you see, for me, people, they say sometimes you are rude. But, I mean, the topic is bad. And people lie, and people, they try to lie to you and try to deceive you. And you are fighting the lies. I'm not fighting the person. We are fighting the devil. And I cannot be nice with the devil. But I am saying to you, when somebody, he come, he is new. He doesn't know what we are talking about. He is learning. He is rejecting. There is no need to call names. Show him. Explain to him, etc. If he's a by the way, if, if somebody is lying and you call him a liar, you are not calling him a name. You know what I mean? This is not a name. If I lie, okay, I'm a liar. You say you guys lie, guy liar. That is not a name. But let us avoid, uh, you know, low class uh, conversation. Anyway, guys, we are here for many hours. <clears throat> I want to say thank you. Don't forget to download the videos if you care, and share them with your friends. We shared a lot of things today. You can cut it pieces and share it with everybody. And if you like, if you. Uh, if you are a person who like to read and to have reference, please don't forget to search my books in Amazon, Amazon France, Amazon Germany, Amazon uh, Dutch. We have in many languages, even in Spanish. Uh, our book in Spanish is published already in Dutch, uh, Swedish, French, uh, and soon Portuguese. Uh, uh, you know, we encourage people to read and to earn knowledge. There is one thing never grow old that is your knowledge your face will grow old your health will grow old but there is something you will be happy to grow that is your wisdom so always seek knowledge my friend learn because this is the only thing make us different from animals otherwise we are the same we eat we drink we sleep and we die but knowledge is wisdom. And those who have wisdom, they will make right decisions in their life. So collect wisdom as much as you can. And you, trust me, the more you learn, uh, when you go and sit with people, people, they will respect you because your wisdom will speak, your knowledge will speak. People will notice right away that you are different. You are not just an ad additional person in the chair sitting there. Your knowledge will speak. People will listen immediately. They will notice that this is different this is something we did not hear before so knowledge will give you really a place you never have before wherever you go it doesn't matter what country you travel to look at me I am a person who is English even is not good but you are listening to me because I have knowledge if I have none none even one of you will sit and waste a minute listening to me why even you want to read my books so learning education is a must for us and this is why jesus says search the books search the books read them and you will find the truth and the truth will set you free with the wisdom of my lord i leave you in peace and peace will give you if you ask for it christ is lord
Islam is false. And see you soon again. Take care. Bye-bye.